I want to make a large marquee style on air sign that I can cast into concrete using 3D printed molds. But first, let's make this small candle holder using the same processes and learn about what works and what doesn't. Thank you to Atom3D for sponsoring this project. They are the ones making the Atom 2.5 and the new Delta Pro that is now being sold through Monoprice. We're going to be using the Delta Pro for this entire project. And because this project involves printing a lot of flexibles, the first thing I'm going to have to do is to steal one of the extruders off of the Atom 2.5 and put it on the Delta Pro. These extruders are way better for flexibles than this one. And I mean, you could just drill this one out and, and put some new Teflon through it. But because this is not a machine that I get to keep, I'm gonna have to put it back into its original condition before I return it. See, this right here, this is what you need for flexibles, just to have something that goes right up to your drive gear and just butts up to it really snugly. Isn't it nice when components like these just fit as a drop-in replacement? Now, the CAD for the part we're going to be printing was actually rather simple. As always, it starts out as a sketch, and all the features in here are just extrusions with different heights to give us those different depth shape in the final cast part. Now, one more thing I did here was to add a draft angle of 2 degrees just to make it a bit easier to move out of the mold. We'll see how necessary that actually is later. There are a few buggers on the on the edges right there, um, but we can just cut those off. But this is definitely good enough to do a first test, so let's go and make a mold for that. First thing we need to do is to clean up this print. That's the brim that we need to take off and all these little boogers right here. Uh, this is just because this thing is printed at 0.1 millimeters of a layer height, and that's just not good for flexibles because it's kind of it's kind of rubbing it off. So let's get these out. So next up to make the wooden frame for this, uh, this thing is 11 centimeters on the inside. So we're gonna need to make a shell for this that is exactly 11 centimeters on the inside and then we can clamp it down and this lip on the edge is gonna seal it against the table or whatever else we clamp against. So the frame is done, the mold is done. This thing sits in here really nice and snugly. The one issue I can see is, I don't know if you can make this out, but this one panel right here is slightly cracked. Um, I know that if you're doing pours and concrete and that sort of stuff, going, I'm not gonna worry about it is probably not the right choice, but I'm just not gonna worry about it. Um, there's not gonna be a ton of concrete in here and if it does crack or split or do other weird stuff, well, it's not a huge loss if we have to try again. Well, I just realized that I don't actually have any concrete mix at hand. I do have a cement-based mortar, which is the next best thing, I guess. It's uh, basically concrete without the larger aggregate, without the larger pebbles and rocks. Um, it's gonna be good enough for this, but for the actual big one, we're gonna be using actual concrete. I do have pure cement and sand and all that stuff at hand, but I don't wanna start mixing, you know, for this little tiny batch.
Welcome back everyone, it's the next day and this thing has had a bit of time to cure. I didn't want to take off the um, cellophane wrap uh, in the very morning. This has had about 15 hours to cure now and if I take my fingernail to this, it still kind of leaves a mark, so this is still kind of green. Unpacking this might go horribly wrong, but let's just try and see how it goes. The good thing is, since this thing is still kind of green, it is super easy to just take some sandpaper and kind of clean off some burrs, or to flatten out this bottom surface if I really have to. Uh, this is scary. All right, no leaks on the bottom. Oh, this is this is solid. This is heavy. Oh, look at that. It's already cracking. Oh no. Oh no, that's a big chunk. But the sides are looking really clean and nice. That's exactly the look I was going for. Maybe with a bit, you know, <laughs> with not as many bubbles, but yeah, okay. Oh yeah, this is still super crusty. I don't think I should be taking this out, but hey, pig is nothing. It seems like the print is actually peeling away really nicely, and you can actually see, you can actually see the individual print lines here, but oh god. Oh god, this is still way too soft. I feel like I'm gonna really mess this up. Oh no, oh no, okay, that's not good. This stuff is still really soft. Okay, I, I don't think there's a way to actually get this out cleanly. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke in here. And I'm just gonna try and pull it out. No, turns out I can't even hold it properly. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so, so that went rather poorly. Um, you can see, I mean, the actual molding part of it in here is actually quite spectacular. Like you get so much detail, even you know, from just the layer lines, and you can you can see pretty much every single bit in here. Now, of course, this isn't concrete. Concrete is a bit rougher and a bit coarser than this, but with this mortar, you can get some really sharp corners and some good details, and all of that is is really nice in here. Uh, the problem here, of course, is. I was impatient. I didn't give it enough time to cure. This is still very, very green. I can, yeah, I can really easily crack this by hand. If I would have given this another 24 hours, I think it would have turned out pretty nicely. Now, what I can take away from this experiment and from this failure, basically, I mean, that's the reason why you do experiments in the first place, right? Uh, is that this stuff, this coated wood, this coated um, particle board, really works well for these sort of molds. Like, yeah, this corner right here, this stuck to it, but it comes off super easily and it gives a very, very clean surface. Like this surface is smooth, this is perfect. And it didn't even take any force to remove it from this mold. You saw that it basically just popped right off. Now the other thing is about this mold, the concrete or the mortar in this case, really came off well off of these edges. So there's a bit stuck on this edge right here, but there was a slight burr on this. I don't think we even needed like these slightly angled sides to make it easier to release. I think that would have been fine. But what I could really tell helped was this thing being flexible and being able to peel away from the material instead of having to pull it straight out. So what we're gonna do in our actual real design, in our actual real CAD, is we're gonna make a shell out of this flexible material about this thickness right here, and then print a solid insert that we can pull out first and then just peel away the edges once that solid core is out and we just have that very very slim shell that should separate from the concrete pretty easily. I mean look at that. This sharpness in the edges and, and the detail reproduction is fantastic. I did not expect it to go that well. I mean of course yeah that doesn't help. All right back to the drawing board we go. Well actually let me try one more thing. I'm gonna cast this thing in plaster. I don't really know how that's gonna work but only one way to find out. Wow. That is so smooth. Oh, it's warm too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, mmm. Look at that. This was only supposed to be a small experiment, just a small, hey, you know, I've got this mold anyways, why not try some, uh, some plast in it? But look at this, this has turned out so crisp and so nicely. It's still warm actually, it's, it's nice and steamy, it feels great. 
So I'm actually not quite sure right now. Should I make the uh, the final, the big part out of plaster or out of concrete? So I don't know, I guess let me know in the comments below. Should we make this from plaster or from concrete? Because it's like, I really like how easily this came together. This worked out so well. And it was basically just, you know, the plaster I had sitting uh, in the corner anyway. So I don't know, I feel like this might be a better way to go about it, but um, it's not concrete, it's plaster, so it's a bit it's a bit smoother. It's not it doesn't have that concrete texture to it. So I just baked this thing at 70 degrees Celsius for basically an entire afternoon, and that was for one very specific reason. Well, obviously this thing was still very wet. This has now significantly lightened up. Uh, it is lighter physically, like a ton of water has evaporated. And before it was just really tacky and moist, and you could you could tell that it had so much moisture just soaked up. Now the reason I did that was that I still want to paint this. And if you if you've seen the thumbnail for this video, obviously you'll know this entire inner surface surface I'll have painted gold by then. So let's actually try that out and see how that goes. I actually expect this uh, plaster to really soak up the paint so I'm gonna put down a layer of primer first and then I can come in with the gold. I'm not gonna bother with all these little pits and little imperfections in here. Um, it's a natural material, right? It's plaster. I'm okay with this. This is a very first trial and experiment. So let's try and get this thing painted. Yeah, and as expected, that is really soaking up the primer. I'm gonna give this a, a few minutes to cure, and then we're gonna put in another layer, and we'll see how well that soaks in, and whether we're ready for the gold top layer. All right, so it's been a bit more than, you know, an hour or two. I've actually let this dry overnight, just to give it a really good chance to soak in. And looking at this, there's some weird stuff happening. I think something is going on with the plaster reacting with the paint, because in the bottom here, you can see this is kind of a, this is kind of getting a, a, I don't know, a texture. It's it's almost like it's peeling off. So I think with the big cast, I'm actually gonna have to prime the plaster in some way. I don't know, with wood glue or something, because that should be a very nice and neutral base. Um, but for now, I mean, I actually kind of like the look because it's a it's a nice texture that it introduces that isn't just the, uh, the pure 3D printed look. So I'm actually gonna go on and keep painting this with this nice uh, lead-free gold spray paint. You can, you can tell how old this thing is. This has been in the house for a while. It, I like it. So two things to note. First of all, this flaky look in here where the uh, primer kind of peeled off. That, you know, I, it looked pretty bad when it was just the primer itself, but with the gold paint on there, it looks like it's actual gold flakes that are peeling off. So I, I, I really enjoy that look. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to reproduce it, but I'm not going to do anything about it with the bigger part. The other thing is, of course, you can see at the edges here, uh, there's quite a bit of bleed through where the masking wasn't perfect. We just got sucked into this top structure that is basically transferred from the 3D print. But for now, let's put some feet on this so we don't scratch up the surface that we put this on, uh, put a candle in it and see how it looks. Ah, uh, that is way too tall. Come on. Uh, nice contrast, but it's too cheesy. I think that's gonna work. Here. There we go. And I think this actually turned out really nicely. This texture really helps. I'm, I'm not sure about sanding this down anymore. So yeah, this taught me a lot about the process and about what I want to do for the bigger cast project. Again, like I said, let me know in the comments below whether you think I should try concrete again or whether I should just stick to plaster um, that I know works. Like plaster has a very nice and even kind of feel to it. It doesn't have that grainy texture that concrete has. And it's also way nicer to work with. It's just, um, it's very plain, it's very simple. Also again, thank you to Atom3D for sponsoring this project. As always, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up, get subscribed on YouTube, and if you really like what I'm doing, you may also want to support this channel directly on Patreon or here on YouTube using the join function below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in part two.